Okay, everybody, welcome to the class. This is the very last class of this module, Advanced 3. And also is the last class of the year. Imagine that one. So time flies. So we're going to start and uh, let me just check for first of all about the platform. This is the one. And uh, below you will find the question for tonight. That should be the last activity that we will do for this. And uh, I was checking and it seems that everybody has finished already. I mean, yeah, there are some parts for some of the students that are missing, but uh, you, everybody has, uh, let me just check, 80%, I guess, let me check. Only Ramon, Ramon is still missing about the platform. So you have until tonight at midnight for you to finish. And let me see if there is anybody else's. Uh -oh. No, that is it. The rest of the class, you have 80 or more percent. So not a problem. Everybody is very good. So very nice. I'm proud of you. Now we're going to check about their attendance as usual. Ana Claudia Gonzalez Velasquez. Present teacher. Good. Andres Giovanni Valdivieso Portillo. Present. Good. David Samuel Galdames Monterrosa. Present teacher. Good. Dora Elizabeth Flores Mendez. Present. Good. Fernando Ernesto Cosme Morales. Fernando Marvin Gonzalez. Present, present. Okay. Fernando Marvin Gonzalez Martinez. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Present Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Iliana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Jarvin Isaac Guevara Miranda. Jose Marcos Rodriguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Present. Good. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present. Good. Juan Miguel Brand Mejía. Teacher, present. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejía. William Alexander Ramirez Flores. Present. Good. Jessica Janari Cortez Díaz. Suleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernández. And Erwin Lagos Andrade. Present teacher. Very good, perfect. Also tonight, we're going to uh, make the INSA for survey. Uh, that is going to be at 8.30. So please be ready with the information. Remember that it's better for you to copy and paste. I know that you have the experience on this one, but anyways, please remember that one, right? Just copy and paste so everything goes very well. Okay, and uh, let me just check. Uh, Okay, I got you, Ramon and Heidi. Heidi, I don't. Let me just check your attendance. Here you are. Okay, so um, before we move on, um, there were some people that uh, still haven't done uh, the little training about uh, the last class. So uh, who's ready for that? Maybe me, teacher. Okay, very good. So let's listen to Juan Miguel. Uh, we're going to to wait for you. I don't know if you are going to share screen or if you are just going to speak, whatever you want. I will share the screen. I'm just checking some something in my cam. Of course. About the background. Ah, okay. 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 I don't know if you are. Yeah, you are watching me. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Just let me 
close some windows over here. Of course. Um, let's see. Okay, that is. Sorry. Okay, I don't know if you are watching my entire screen. Yes. Okay. So, this little training, it will be about a. Excel functions. Uh, specifically, we will talk about VLOOKUP function. That is one of the most uh, or the very most useful uh, functions uh, in Excel when you have a, a huge data set and you have to look for a, specifically one, a, one value. Okay. So, uh, the VLOOKUP is a function that uh, help, help us to retrieve a value from a data set where another value is known. And at the right uh, in the slide, we have the, um, the way that we use and we, and we write this function in, in Excel. There is a short description uh, this function looks for a value in the leftmost column of a table and then returns a value in the same row from a column you specify. By default, the table must be sorted in ascending order. Yeah. Um, there is an example, uh, equal VLOOKUP, uh, and there, there are uh, many arguments that this function uh, must have in order to uh, retrieve the value that you want to know, yeah? So there are uh, four arguments. The lookup value uh, is the value to be found in the first column of the table, or if it's not the table, your data set, and can be a value, a reference, or a text string. Um, the table, the table array, is the data set when you, uh, where you are looking uh, uh, this this known value. Yeah, is the table of text, numbers, or logical values in which data is retrieved. Table table array can be a reference to a range or a range name. Call index num is the name. No, is the number of the column, yeah, a, which is in the table array, and a, is the a number, the column number where you want to retrieve this value, yeah, a, and the last argument that it uh, it could be. Uh, omitted is a logical value uh, to find and it helps us to find the closest match in the first column uh, sorted in ascending order equal true or omitted and to find an exact match equal false so um, this this picture on the right side of the slide is the um how to say this? The uh, the way to the way that Microsoft explained to us how to use and how to write this function. But uh, the objective of this training is to uh, not only to to know uh, in, the, in a theoret theoret the or theory. Theorica? Theorica. In theory, you can say. Uh -huh. In theory, uh, not in theory, but also uh, in the practice. So uh, let's do it. I have an, an example over here. Um, 
I will try to, to solve this exercise. If not all of them, but in order to explain how to use this function in, in Excel. So you have a, in the left a table on, on my screen, and on your screen, you have some values. For example, the date in a column, the model in another column, and you have uh, values that uh, they have to, or, or um, let's see, those values you have to find, yeah, how or which is the price, the discount, the tax, the amount to be paid, to, to be paid. But uh, in order to find these values, you have, in, in this case, in the, right side of the Excel sheet, you have this uh, table as a guidance, yeah? So um, you have a model in here and you have the model in the other, uh, in the other table. So in order to uh, look, uh, no, in order to find these values, you, you, you could, um, use this table as an auxiliar, but using the lookup, uh, the VLOOKUP function. So all the functions uh, that we use, uh, it begins with an equal sign. So in this case, the, the way that we have to, uh, to write this function is VLOOKUP, VLOOKUP, and you have to specify in the first argument what what is the noun value, yeah? So in this case, the noun value is the column B, specifically the, the B9 cell. So uh, you have to, uh, in this case, um, to write uh, the name of the, the, the cell name that you, that you know, and uh, in this case, you have to separate the arguments with a comma, yeah? Uh, the other argument is the table array. Uh, I, uh, it means that uh, what is the, the auxiliary data set that you have in order to find the value that you are looking for in B9? Yeah, so the, the table array in this case is from H12 to uh, K15, yeah? The next, the next argument is the number uh, of the column where this value uh, could uh, be found. In this case, the column uh, number, you are looking for the price, and you have in this case to number one, the model, two, the price, discount the third one and taxes the fourth column on this. So you have to, you are looking for uh, the data which is located on the second column, yeah? So in this case, you have to do this, uh, you have to write this, the, the number two in order to uh, understand that the price, the value that you are looking for is the price and it's located in the second column. And the last uh, argument, it's about uh, the logical, uh, yeah, logical value. Uh, and it means that is false, uh, false, it retrieves the, the exact uh, match of the of the value that you are looking for. So in this case, I have to uh, put in here this um, this uh, this word false. So over, uh, until here, you have to close the parenth parenthesis. Yeah. 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 Parenthesis. Yeah. parenthesis uh -huh. That's fine. And 
you have you are uh, found you have found uh, the price of this model so in this case versa has this price 22000 and uh, 450 bucks 50 dollars yeah and if you are uh, sure what uh, that your function is uh, right in a it is wrought in a right way you must use this but in this case if i do this we you will have to notice that there is an error in some uh, locations so you have to uh, to review what is the problem and the problem in here is that you don't have or you have not a uh, Sorry, sorry here. You have not uh, fixed the table array that you are looking for. So you have to fix these situations in order to all the values in, uh, in this column uh, must uh, be retrieved or you have to have these values retrieved from uh, the auxiliary table yeah and uh, the same way you have to uh, you have to do in order to find the discount and find the tax the tax but uh, in this case the discount is only a percentage yeah but here you have to write not a percentage instead of uh, instead of the percentage you have to write down here the value that uh, matches to this discount um, from the price that uh, from the from the price of the of the vehicle. So in here you have to use this. Uh, this function again, VLOOKUP. So you have that the value that you know is the same, V9. The table array is the same from H12 to K15, but you have to remember that here you have to fix this uh, como fijar teacher, fix. Yeah, no. Yeah, fix is fine. Yeah, fix. Okay. Fix this uh, this array. Yeah. And uh, in this case, the number column that you have to uh, find is the third one. So you have to write the number three in here. And at the end, just write the false word. Yeah. And you have um 0 0.12 yeah but if we are talking about percentages you could uh, use this yeah but we don't want in this column the percentage yeah we want the value so the value that you have a uh, fine over here, you have to multiply for this uh, for this another value, which is the price. So you have in here the discount rel uh, rel related to this price. And obviously, if your uh, function is okay, all the values will be calculated at once. Yeah, uh, for the tax is the same, almost the same. So you can do this situation, but you have to fix the values that you want to uh, be found. And for this, it not 
it is in D9. So it's C9, yeah? And you have uh, this uh, problem solved. And the amount to be paid, it also uh, be calculated but by um, taking the price. Um, I start teacher to, to, to wait to no. subtract. Okay, to subtract the discount and uh, add the taxes at the end. So in this case, you have find you have found uh, all the values that you wanted to uh, that you were looking for. Yeah. Uh, instead of uh, trying to use the if uh, function, if the model is versa, then uh, the price will be this, but uh, if not versa, and if you, the price will be this, no. You, in this case, you could use the VLOOKUP function in order to, uh, to look and find uh, the values that you are looking for, yeah? Um, I don't know, I, I, I think uh, this example is, uh, is not only in theory, it's uh, a practice example, and uh, we can just copy and paste over here. Just let me do this. Yeah. In order to, to have what is the right. Uh, okay, let's do this. I just try to write it down each, in this case, <clears throat> each function in order to, uh, to know what, what have, uh, what we use to look and find all the values that we were uh, looking for them. So in this case, I don't know if there is a, a question about this function. And it, it this function is also uh, useful uh, when you have a, a name of a person maybe, and you have to know, uh, for example, <clears throat> Uh, what department is, what salary is, what uh, are the all of the discounts of this person and many, many other examples. But um, I wanted to explain in this, in this case, how to use this VLOOKUP function in a, in a maybe a real environment. Yeah. So for me, it, it's done. I don't know if you have any other question. Hey, yeah, very good, very nice. Uh, do you have, uh, guys, any questions for Juan Miguel? Yes, I think it's a very useful function. I was thinking in 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 grades. I think it's a very useful for for giving grades to the students, for giving percentage, for giving average. We use Excel to 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 give the grades. Yeah. And and uh, a specific question is what what uh, values I I I saw that you use a, a, a dollar sign I, I don't know what okay. values how do you fix a a a cell a, a value how do you fix uh, it's with a dollar sign it's in order to uh, the column 
in this case, the column, I will, I will try to do something. Yeah. The column and the row. We, okay. You, the you use the dollar sign in the middle, the column. Then the, yeah. the number of the column. You, you have uh, another situation or another way to to write this, uh, this dollar sign. You must, or you, sh you should, yeah, you should press the F, F4 uh, key. And there is like to play, yeah. Uh, what, um, what kind of a uh, fixing situation you you want to use, yeah. If you only want to fix the row, if you only want to fix the column, uh, if you okay. want to don't fix anything, and or maybe if you want to fix column or row. Yeah, with F four key. The first dollar sign fix the column. The second dollar sign fix the the row. Fix the row. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Okay. Thank you. I I was try. Uh, I will be trying my grades today. I just you. <laughs> good. Okay, okay. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Obi. Okay. You're uh, welcome. Is there any other question, my friends? Okay, I just have one question. What is the difference between VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP? Uh, VLOOKUP you use to, uh, is used to find uh, values in columns and HLOOKUP, uh, you you use this function for find uh, values in a row. Okay. Very and good. there is there is huh? a new a new function uh, that the name in Spanish is uh, buscar x x lookup I think. Ah, okay. Um, it's uh, I think yeah x lookup. I think it's most useful than uh, v lookup and h lookup because. Uh, you must uh, you uh, with this function you can uh, look and find any value in any column uh, with VLOOKUP you have to be uh, you have to you must have yeah the value that you are looking for in the very very first column of the table yeah. uh, the x lookup you must use a uh, the um, the text or the value that you are looking for in any of the column or any or any row. Uh -huh. Very good, perfect. Thank you very much. It's very useful. Okay, okay. and well, yeah, well. it was a very clear thing. And uh, well, you know, Excel is is fantastic. I mean, you can do a lot of things and they are very useful whenever you are using a large amount of data. So definitely it's going to be very good. Uh, the only recommendation is for you to be sure that all the data is fine, right? Because you need to be sure about that one. But other than that, it's, it's going to be very nice and you can take some courses on that one on Instaform as well. So that is good. Perfect. Thank you, uh, Juan Miguel. So now we're going to make a little pause and we're going to check about the uh, the Instafor survey, you know? Remember that today is the last class and as just, uh, as what we used to do is we're, uh, where we are going to do the, the, the survey. So I'm gonna wait for Juan Miguel to stop sharing and so I can share. Um, we're gonna watch the video. I know that you have the experience, but anyways, just in case we're gonna watch the video, okay? So I'm gonna show you right now. Here we go. Como inglés corporativo, vamos a apoyarte para poder desarrollar la encuesta de satisfacción de manera correcta. Vas a recibir a tu correo electrónico personal la información con los datos correspondientes del curso. Vamos a ingresar y vamos a seleccionar el enlace para poder desarrollar la encuesta de satisfacción. 
Vamos a regresar al correo que hemos recibido y vamos a colocar el número de la orden de inicio siempre proporcionada por nosotros. La vamos a copiar tal cual está en el correo electrónico y la vamos a colocar en el punto número uno. En el siguiente punto vamos a colocar el nombre completo, que es de cada uno de ustedes. Lo vamos a copiar de igual manera en la información que hemos compartido y lo vamos a colocar en el nombre completo. Siguiente a ello, vamos a colocar el correo electrónico personal que ustedes han proporcionado a Inglés Corporativo. De igual manera, vamos a colocar así el número de contacto que ustedes han proporcionado. Lo vamos a copiar. Y así lo vamos a colocar en el número de celular. Posteriormente colocamos el sexo. En el punto número 6 vamos a desplazar la flechita y vamos a buscar el departamento de residencia donde ustedes actualmente viven. De igual manera vamos a colocar el municipio en el cual ustedes están residiendo. En el punto número 8 vamos a colocar el nombre de la empresa. Cuidado en ese punto, ya que vamos a colocar el nombre de la empresa tal cual razón social y nosotros lo tenemos registrado. De igual manera, les hemos compartido el nombre correcto para que ustedes puedan colocarlo. En el nombre del proveedor vamos a colocar de acuerdo a nuestro centro de formación, que es Inglés Corporativo Regal International. Vamos a desplazar la fecha y vamos a buscar el nombre de nuestro centro de formación. Lo seleccionamos y en el siguiente punto vamos a colocar el nombre del curso. De igual manera, vamos a colocarlo tal cual está en información que nosotros hemos proporcionado, tanto por correo electrónico y por WhatsApp. Vamos a copiar el número del curso y vamos a colocar. En el punto número 11, las evaluaciones que ustedes serán las harán de manera individual y personal según lo que ustedes han vivido en el transcurso del curso. Las fechas de inicio de igual manera las vamos a poder verificar en la información que se ha compartido. En este caso nos vamos a ir al calendario y debemos tener el cuidado ya que en el calendario podemos retroceder o adelantar las fechas. De igual manera, según las fechas proporcionadas, vamos a tener que buscar el mes y la fecha indicada del inicio del módulo. En la fecha de finalización, de igual manera proporcionada por nosotros, vamos a desplazar el calendario y así vamos a seleccionar el día en el cual está finalizando el curso. En el punto número 14, vamos a colocar una valoración personal que ustedes han recibido de parte del desarrollo del curso. Posteriormente, ustedes pueden seleccionar algunos cursos de otro interés o algún comentario que ustedes tengan respecto al trabajo desarrollado. Vamos a darle clic en el botón azul de enviar. Y posteriormente vamos a recibir un mensaje de la respuesta a su enviado. Cuando ustedes han recibido este mensaje, favor de tomar una captura de pantalla, compartirla al grupo de WhatsApp correspondiente junto con su nombre completo, según nosotros los tenemos registrados. Okay, very good. Just remember that the evaluation, I mean, the this survey is just about the course. It doesn't have to do anything with the schedule, the book, or any other thing, right? It's just going to be about this course. And, well, this is the 
the one. So let's go and do it uh, one by one, okay? So number one is going to be uh, the order, right? So it's going to be like this one. This is the one. Just in case you don't have it, let me just copy and sign it here in the in the chat. So you have it there. Okay. That is it. And we just paste it here. Okay. Has everybody done that, number one? Or is anybody missing or finishing that one, number one? Please share this link. Uh, the one from the survey, this one. Yeah, yeah, please. Okay. Uh, hold on a second. Let me just check here. That is. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Let's wait for you to open it and. Enter the first part that is going to be the order. Okay. Is there anybody missing on the number one? No, I'm okay. Very good. So the next one is an easy one. Your name, your full name according to do it. Remember that it should be like that. Okay, I'm going to give you a little time. Okay, has everybody finished? Is there anybody missing into this one? No, teacher. Okay, so then is the email. Remember that it should be the email that you are using to log into the platform, right? So I will give you just a couple of minutes. Okay, is there anybody missing number three? Okay, so let's go to the phone number. So please enter your phone number on number four. Okay, and let me know when you're done. So is there anybody uh, missing into that one? Okay, number five is an easy one as well. So you just check any of the options. Is there anybody missing number five? Okay, so number six in my case is Santa Ana, but in your case, you need to choose the one for you. Is there anybody missing number six? Okay. So number seven is an easy one as well. So it's going to be like the place exactly where you live. I mean, you know that one, right? So is there anybody missing number seven? Okay. Number eight, this should be Razón Social. So the legal name of the company, right? So please enter that one. Okay, is there anybody missing number eight? Okay, so number nine is an easy one. You just click on that and then you just look for this one, Inglés Corporativo Regal International. That is the one. So you enter that one and that will be it. Okay, is there anybody missing number nine? Okay, the name of the course also is that and the email that you receive, but in case you don't have it, I can copy it and send it to you. That is not a problem. So it's going to be there in the chat. Okay, and it's exactly like this. Okay, so is there anybody missing number 10? 
So this, you put in the chat the, 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 the name of the provider, Inglés Corporativo Regal, you put in the chat, no? No, this is a pull down menu. So you just need to click on the menu and look. Ah, okay, you okay. Just, okay. Call, uh -huh, just call down and you click on that. Very good. Ah, and okay, it's, yes. you found it. The name of the course, yes. Okay, you so everything. Okay, and uh, the name of the provider, do you have that? Number nine. Number nine, yes, yes. Okay, very good. Perfect, so let's the, move on. The name of the course is Inglés Avanzado Module 3. That's the one, yeah, very good. For okay. the for the 10. Yeah, for number 10, good. Okay. Okay, for number 11, then we're going to choose. Okay, so this is about only the time for the course. This is only about the content of the course and the structure and the tools, the technology, I mean, like the platform. That will be it, okay? So is there anybody missing number 11? Okay, so let's go to number 12. So for that one, the date is uh, 17, October 17. So the only thing that we need to do is to click here on the little calendar to go back and go to 17. That is going to be, where is it? It's here, Monday. Click on that one and that's it. Maybe the format of the date is going to be different depending on the setting of your computer. That is not a problem, okay? So, is there anybody missing number 12? Okay, number 13 is very easy. Just click on the little picture of the calendar and this is today, right? The 21st, November the 21st. So you click on that one and that's it. Okay, is there anybody missing number 13? Okay, so number 14 is overall about the course only. Remember that it's just about the course. So you just click your option and fun. Is there anybody missing number 14? No, teacher. Okay, number 15 and 16 are optional. So 15 is like if you want to learn, for example, Excel or any other course. Number 16, if you have comments, if you don't have any, just leave it blank. And then click send or submit. And remember that you need to send pictures of uh, that one that says thank you. I have some of you already here. Let me tell you the ones that I have. So you can check. If I don't say your name, it's because I still don't have yours. I have Roxana Asensio, Ramon Enrique, Roberto Luis, Fernando Ernesto Cosme, Jose Marcos Rodriguez, Juan Miguel Brand, Fernando Marvin González Martínez, José Osmín Rivas, Dora Elizabeth Flores, Heidi Eugenia Salguero. Now I have also Andrés Giovanni Valdivieso, Ana Claudia González, sí. Erwin Lagos, Suleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernández, Who's missing? Jose Wilfredo is still missing. I have already. Uh -huh. Go ahead. I will start to do it. The, the summit. Can you confirm the number eight for me? I'm sorry. You can confirm the number eight. The name of the company. Ah, okay. Very well. Yeah. Let me just check into that one. So it's for Jarvin, right? Yes. Okay, the name that we have is Confecciones del Valle, coma S. A. T. C. V. V. Okay, thank you. Very well. Okay, I got already Iliana Giselle Cañas. David Samuel Galdames Monterosa, Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía, José Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. 
So I guess it's just Jarvin, the one that is missing. Let me check. Jessica Janari as well. We're missing only, only you two. The rest of the people I got already. Let me just repeat myself about the ones that I received already. Okay, it's going to be Roxana Asensio, Ramon Enrique, Roberto Luis Omaña, Fernando Ernesto Cosme, Jose Marcos Rodríguez Ayala, Juan Miguel Brán Mejía, Fernando Marvin González Martínez, Jose Osmín Rivas Navas, Dora Elizabeth Flores Méndez, Heidi Eugenia Salguero Juárez, eh, Ana Claudia González Velázquez, Andrés Giovanni Valdivieso Portillo, Erwin Lagos, Suleima Ivonne Moreno de Hernández, Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar, David Samuel Galdames Monterrosa, Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía, José Wilfredo Ayala Soto. So I'm still missing Jarvin and uh, Jessica Janari. Hello, Jessica, are you here with us? I still missing Jarvin and Jessica Janani. Okay, very good. I have already Jarvin Isaac. Yeah, I don't have any other missing. Just Jessica Janari. Hello, okay, you hear us. Hello. Teacher, teacher, I'm sorry, but I'm driving right now. Okay, okay. So uh, whenever you get home, could you please send me the picture of the survey? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, perfect. Let's hope she can send it. Okay, very well. So, uh, we are going to, uh, well, I don't want to interrupt the next person that is going to present, so I'm going to check the attendance right now, okay? And then we move on with the people that are still missing. And then we're going to have free practice today, which is going to be very good. I have a couple of topics for you, and then... Let's see how it goes. Before that one, of course, we're going to check the attendance. Let me just find that one. Here we go. Okay, here is it. Ana Claudia Gonzalez Velasquez. Yes, teacher. Good. Andres Giovanni Valdivieso Portillo. Present. Good. David Samuel Galdames Monterrosa. Present, teacher. Good. Dora Elizabeth Flores Mendez. Present. Good. Fernando Ernesto Cosme Morales. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Present. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Present teacher. Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Jarvin Isaac Guevara Miranda. Present teacher. Good. Jose Marcos Rodriguez Ayala. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Present. Good. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Brán Mejía. Present teacher. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Omaña Orellana. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejía. Good. 
William Alexander Ramírez Flores. Present. Good. Jessica Janari Cortés Díaz. Suleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernández. I'm here. Okay, good. And uh, Erwin Lagos Andrade. Present teacher. Very good. Okay. So now, yes, it's time for uh, the ones that still have not finished uh, to to share, to uh, help us uh, with a little training for life. So who wants to be the next one? Me, teacher. Okay, very good. So do you want me to share your presentation? And let me try to, to share it myself. Of course. Let me see. Oh, there's a message that says that it's not compatible. That's kind of strange. Uh, oh. Let me see. I have it open here, so of course I can help you. So let me just check here. Okay, there you go. And let me just do this. Perfect. Okay, guys, tonight um, I will talk to you about a little training. Uh, oh, we're going to talk about how to propagate orchids easily at home. You know, plants are my passion, right? So I'll try to share with you some some secrets. <laughs> and can you go with the next one, please? Of course. Okay, steam cutting method. I I will expose this one because I think it's uh, it's the one that works for me. Okay. Steam, for steam cuttings, you will need a waterproof tray about three inches deep. Fill, in, fill it either with damp spangnus, spangnum moss, damp sand, or a mix of both. Then clip a cane that's at least 10 inches long, severing it near the orchid's base and just above a knot, which is a leaf joint. You can cut the cane into pieces that retain at least two nodules each and cut the pieces row ends with the power powdered antifungal such as charcoal, cinnamon, or sulfur. After the laying pieces horizontally on top of the medium in the tray, press them only lightly into it so that the surfaces remain uncovered. In case the train is transparent plastic bag and place it in a warm position, would it be what it will receive bright light, but no direct sun. In about three or four months, some of the cuttings might send up new plantlets from the nodules. Okay. So it is, it is important you to, to cut it as, as seen on the image because the, the, uh, the steam has to have uh, at least two nodules. Okay, here are the, direction, the directions. First of all, we have to cut a stem of your orchid already existing, at least 12 inches long near the base using pruning shears or a sharp knife. Then we have to divide the stem into three or four inch sections, making sure uh, each segment has a dormant bond. The dormant bond is like the union that you can see in, in, in this in these um, in these stems. Okay. okay. Step two. Then we line a shallow tray with spangnum moss and mix the moss until it's truly damp. Place the cutting in the tray. Cover the tray with poly poly polyurethane plastic wrap and place in a location that's at least sixty degrees Fahrenheit and out of direct sunlight. This is very strange because you have to find the right quantity of water. You cannot put too much, but not, not, uh, you have to find it. It's very hard. It's very hard, but because uh, you can, you, you need to find the right quantity. They're very, they're very special plants. They're very special plants. Step three, Fill one 
three or four inch pot per orchid plantlet with fair part putting mixed to within an inch of the top of the container. Once the orchid stem segments have sprouted small plantlets, plantlets from the buds, place one in each container, covering the remaining stem segment and roots with potting mix. Then step four, you can line a tray with a smooth flat stones and add enough water to nearly cover the stones. Place the orchid pot on the top of the stones to keep the air around the orchid humid. Keep your new orchids in an area that receives bright, indirect light and mist them daily. Then drop your orchids prefer temperatures between 55 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit, depending on the spices and a minimum night temperature of 50 degrees for maximum flowering. And step five, water your new orchids until water leaks from the bottom, drainage holes once per week and fertilize every three weeks with a liquid orchid fertilizer from spring to middle. Alternately, dip the bottom of the container in a bucket of water, allowing, will, allowing it to soak through the drainage holes, dips. Uh, you can sprinkle cinnamon on the cut stem shoot or pollen orchid to help with fight of bacteria. Cinnamon is a natural bacteria fighter. And finally, you can enjoy with the family and friends these beautiful flowers that can only transmit beautiful energy. Beautiful, amazing. This is very nice. I like it. <laughs> I really love them. I I, I join. My love friend, you are the lady from the plant for the plant. It would be from or for the plants, teacher. I I guess she is from both. But exactly. <laughs> <laughs> for <or> from. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. I learned. I didn't know that cinnamon is a natural antibacterial or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, and it and it really works. It really works. Mm, I will try because I didn't know. Definitely, yeah. yeah definitely, these are plants you really need to take care of. Really, mm. really. All the so... steps you've been sharing, I don't know if I I can try because must be very careful to look for the right temperature and then water in them. Mm. Yeah, but they are so beautiful that they inspire yeah. you to do. They're so they really do. <laughs> beautiful. Amazing. Very good. Yeah, I like the garden. Very nice. And uh, hey, guys, do you have any questions or comments for Heidi? Yes, uh, cinnamon will be useful for any other plants. I, I, I think this is the general use. What do you think? I have only used it on this kind of, of, of orchids, not on, on other plants. Yes, what because is... it, sorry, I, I think it could be good for, it's good for orchid that is maybe, a... I, mm -hmm, maybe plants that are similar, for yes. example, violets, it might work. Okay, excellent. Good. Nice, any other comments or questions? Okay, very well. Thank you very much, Heidi. They were amazing. The tips were very good. Yeah, you need to be very patient, but if you love what you do, definitely it's going to be something very easy. I mean, you if you're passionate about this one, of course, it's going to be very nice. Yeah, you guys need to come soon. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Perfect. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, who else is this missing to present, my friends? Hi, Patrice. Of course, let's listen to Jose Wilfredo. Me, teacher, me, teacher. Okay, I will share my screen, teacher. Just... Of course.
Okay, we can see, but we cannot listen to you. You can hear me now? Yeah, now we can. Okay, perfect. Well, my topic is how to install a CD player. So as we know, uh, there are two types of CD player. One is the original CD player that is at the same uh, brand of the card. And other one is original, but is like conventional because uh, as you know, uh, is made from a different kind of, of companies. So uh, those are the materials that we will use to, to install the CD player. One is the battery, uh, double A. The other one is a black, uh, a black tape uh, to, yo to join the wires. And the other one is the a voltage, a voltage checker. That's for a card, because uh, as we know, we have uh, another kind of, of tools that we have to use for the card. We don't have to use the, the conventional tester that we already know how that, uh, how that um, has the function. So this is, the, this is a, a little diagram. This is a little bit diagram uh, and how, how we can see how we can install. But first uh, you have to, to make some steps after to check that, that gram, that diagram. So as I mentioned, the, the original CD player come with a, with a connector and you only need to so unplug and plug in back uh, the new one. So that's easier. But when you install a conventional CD player, maybe a Kenwood, a Sony, or other kind of run of CD player, uh, you have to check some uh, information and then you, you need to check the manual. Uh, why? Because the first uh, that you need uh, to do is uh, identify each wire because each wire that the CD player has on the back is for is for a different uh, function. So the first uh, thing that I guess that you need to identify is the wire uh, from the speaker, uh, because the speaker only have two wire, one positive and another negative. So here is where when you have to use the battery, the, the AA battery because uh, when you um, connect which border with, with, the, with another, uh, maybe you, well, you have to pull uh, in the battery, positive and negative, and you have two cables in the, in the speaker, positive and battery, and positive, positive and negative. So if you connect on the wrong way, uh, the speaker will be, uh, push out. So, uh, this no. When you connect uh, the different pos uh, negative and positive, the speaker will sync, and that's the reason that is connect wrong. So is wrong connect. So you have to uh, switch the the wire, and then you have to try if the speaker uh, push out. When the speaker push out. So that will be the correct uh, way to connect. So you have to identify, you have to identify one uh, positive and the other one like negative. With the CD player, it's really different. Uh, where it's different because uh, you have to check because uh, the CD player is marked like rear and front. So uh, in the car, we have two spaces is rear that is on the front and uh, no rear is in the back and front is on is on the front so that will be for a uh, those um position so in the cd player we have two wires for the speakers so we have to check the two wires in this case uh i select like green one and that will be for a left rear so that will be um that will be marked with with a green. So both cables will be green, but the one will be with a black line. So that will be a negative. 
In this case, uh, we can see here, black freer, so green, black. So that means that is a negative. And the other one only will be green. So that will be uh, positive. So you have to connect like this, uh, your speaker. If not, the, the sounds will be um, distortion. So after that, uh, you have to, to continue uh, checking for the other three speakers. So uh, to connect to the right way. So after that, you will see one blue cable. So this blue cable, is like um, all a speaker will have this uh, those, um, those, those color and um, blue one, uh, other that will be a light blue, another will be a yellow, another will be red, another will be black. So those color will be the same in all CD, in all CD players. So in that situation, if you will use a uh, an antenna, so you have to connect the, the blue one to the antenna. So in other kind of, of CD player, you only have to use one cable that is already set that the maybe the, the socket came to this to this right, to this, yeah, in this position. So you only have to connect. So and after that for the uh, blue or light blue with a white line will be for the amplifier. So when you use an amplifier to, to connect other uh, speaker or to connect a, an extra speakers, uh, you have to use this one and you have to connect this uh, to the amplifier. And then with the amplifier, you have to, to uh, follow other kind of, of um, setup. So then uh, the yellow one, so the yellow one is really important because it is uh, one light that you will uh, bring to the battery. So when you connect this battery, you have to use a fuse. If you don't use a fuse, maybe that could be born. So we need to be careful with that. So after that, the... Um, the red one is to the switch. So when you turn off to the switch, your CD player power it will be power on, and that's how will that uh, work. And then the black wire uh, will be negative. So you have to connect to the chassis. And after that, you are ready to listen to music, your favorite music. Okay, very good, very interesting, nice. Uh, do you have guys any questions for Jose Wilfredo? No questions. I have a question for you. Uh, how much time does it take for you to do this kind of installation? Uh, to be honest, my first installation took like one hour. And now, but now uh, at least twenty minutes. Yeah, of course, experience, right? Very good. Yeah. yeah, because everything that you told me, I mean, maybe I will take more than one hour the very first time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and to be honest, it's really, it's really easy and funny at the same time, because uh, you are discovering something new. Yeah, it's it's it sounds like something that yeah. If you try it and you learn how to do it, you can enjoy it. Very nice. Yeah, that's right. And one specific part is this. You all, all the time have to use a fuse. Yeah, that is important, right? So everybody, yeah. every, all the electric system goes well. Yeah, that's right. Okay, very Thank well. You. Huh? Thank you for your attention. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. It was very interesting, uh, Jose Wilfredo. Okay, pleasure. Okay, thank you. Anybody else that is still missing that wants to share? There were a few people, as I remember, that still have not delivered the little training. No one else. It was very interesting. You can see how we can learn from each other. This is amazing. I mean, 
we are not only practicing English, but learning many other things. Uh, I'll go ahead. Sorry, I, I I didn't do it the presentation because I didn't have time, but I can show you a little training about how to make a survey in Google Sheets. Good, let's do it. Okay, I can I can share my screen. Of course, go ahead. So give me a minute. Okay. Uh, you can see my my screen. Uh, no, yet, but it's loading. Seems that ah, yeah, right now it's possible. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, sometimes we we need to gathering information about some I don't know for a business. Me, for example, or not me. My wife has a little entrepreneur. She so she sold a dress clothes clothes for ladies. So she. She she make um request I don't know how to say pedidos yeah requests request yeah. yeah she okay she makes requests but uh people request request her so they get her in the information and sorry she get in the information and she she made the request to the to the to the company. So she places orders. Yeah, she places orders. Uh, so she has a problem because all um many people send a chat in WhatsApp for I I really buy this and I really buy this. I like this and you know, it's a, uh, thanks God it's had a lot of orders. So for getting the information and uh, so we find this idea in Google Sheet. She of uh, they offers uh, an option to to do a little a form uh, for recollect information. So uh, only one you you can need to do is create a new a new document, a new um, sheet. In this case, okay. And, can you can put a title for example I don't know or there's it's an example and in this hit you don't need to do anything we'll ask do Google made all the work so you can uh, you can choose tools and create a new form for you call it information and you have a lot of option to to create your your request, for example, you can put a little I don't know description, and you can um, you can put a a question for example, for example, uh, what color do you want? Color one and put a different different option because you have you can put a short answer paragraph paragraph uh, multi multiple options a check list etc so you can choose auction and you know, some some options and when you when you have uh, complete the, the the question you can add to your form and create a new create a new uh, a new question for example, uh, when the event is, and you can put because when you need to a date, so you can add a day and you can and add the questions, and even you can you can attach image, for example, for example, you can choose a uh, file a lot. And there is a there's an advertising that uh, people people will can people can you can send you uh, files so you can choose continue and there is other other uh, configuration but for this example it's it's fine so add the question 
And when you when you have your your uh, form complete, you can choose uh, send, and you can share by email or you can copy the the link and share with your contacts in WhatsApp or you can uh, embed in your web page, etc. So for this case, we we choose the link and in other we will use it. So this is the form and you can answer, for example, red, then is the is tomorrow, and you can uh, unload the file. For example, this file and the file will be unloaded. And so when it's complete, you, you can send M. Uh, and the answer it was registered in your in your shit. So you don't need to do sorry again. Okay. And there is a, a, a one a new sheet when your when all the answer that, that the question you pop in the in the form. So there is a time style instead of your question and there is a Find that a lot, so it's very useful because you can share this this link uh, by WhatsApp, and all people can use in your your cell phone, in your computer, whatever, wherever they want. So it's very useful for getting information. Hey, okay, very good, very nice, and yes, as you say. This is something very useful that you can do at any any time uh, with any kind of information that you want to request. I mean, this is amazing. I mean, Google has a lot of things that are for free that are there for you just to use it. So it's very useful, the information that you have shared, uh, Fernando. Anybody has any question for Fernando or comments? The answer of the survey would be registered in the in the uh, spreadsheet in this table. Yeah, all the answer will be registered in this in the sheet in this table. Yeah, for exams, you know, this is amazing, and actually, you will be able to uh, to do an automatic response with the grade if you want, or to create graphics. I mean, you can do a lot of things. Yeah. And you can use in your in your cell phone, and it's very useful because uh, people can load uh, your your pictures. So it's very very useful for. In in our case, it was very useful for take orders. Yeah. Because. Yeah, because uh, because the the clients uh, use the the survey and send pictures and send comments and send all detail. So in all orders that is in the in the same place. So <laughs> my wife uh, say a lot of time for collecting information. That is so true. I mean uh, yes, uh, it's. I mean, it's amazing. I use that a lot for for tests. Whenever I had to do some tests, I mean, I create a form, send that one, and actually in the configuration you can check the answers for the questions and automatically. I mean, you don't have to be there on the paper grading a lot of people. You just send that one and that's it. So, it's a very good thing. Any other comments or questions for Fernando? No more. Okay, very well. Thank you, Fernando. It was very useful. Good. Is there anybody else that wants to deliver the training that is still missing? Very good. So as I was telling you, I mean, sure. I'll go ahead. Very good. We have more. Francisco, let's see. Hey, teacher. Give me a little second, please. <laughs> of course, of course. I'm excited.
searching. Sorry, teacher, I tried to share my screen. Of course, take your time. We will be here. Who else is missing? I guess Ileana Giselle. Yes, teacher. I'm so, uh, and were you able to uh, create the yeah. training? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna share with you. Okay. So, screen. let's go with Giselle and then we we'll go back with you, Francisco, okay? Okay. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. You can use, you can see the, the. Yeah, yeah, we're able to. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, you tell us well, that we can talk now. about anything, right? Okay. So I'm a, like a coffee lover or something like that. So I'm going to talk about coffee. Okay, good. I can, okay. Okay, um, good ideas start with brainstorming, great ideas start with coffee and also a great day starts with coffee. But what is coffee? Uh, well, I think that everybody in this class, uh, maybe someday, or I don't know, uh, drank a, a cup of coffee at least once, at least. And well, coffee is a drink obtained by infusion based on roasted beans. And uh, that could be in two, two forms, like a whole or ground beans of the coffee tree. Uh, the taste and properties of the drink will depend on the conditions in which the plants from which the grains are to be obtained grow. And for example, uh, uh, an example of the conditions could be uh, the light, humidity, climate, the method of separating the beans, and of course, the roasting process. I'm gonna show you uh, six of the most common types of coffee that we have. Uh, first of all, uh, I want to share with you the espresso. The espresso is a kind of shot of coffee. Uh, like, the, like the image you can see, if you buy or if you go to the coffee shop and you say, I want espresso, uh, they are going to serve you something like like the like this. It's a kind of shot of coffee. And well, espresso is one of the most basic and simple types of coffee. It consists consists of a coffee infusion that is made by boiling water in cut, in contact with the grain. It can be prepared in a few very very few seconds, and it's usually around. Its size is usually around 30, uh, I think it's like, like a, I don't know, like a millimeter, so ML, right, teacher? Yeah, yeah. millimeters, yeah. Millimeters, okay. And then we have a macchiato. This is one of the most demand, uh, demanded type of, of coffee. Very delicious, actually. Uh, it is a type of espresso coffee to which a small amount of milk is added like the, like the image that we can see. Then we have the very, very, very most common that this type of coffee is, is present in every menu of every restaurant that you can visit. And you can see this type of coffee. Uh, the Americano is derived from espresso, a correct characterized by adding much larger amount of water than usual. Uh, also, you can add sugar, so you can like play with that. 
So if you like and maybe sweeter or not, you can play with, with the with the with the with the sugar. And then we have coffee with milk, uh, similar to macchiato. Coffee with milk supposed the incorporation of an equal or similar proportion of milk in coffee. Uh, this is very easy to prepare. For example, here in my house, well, I I, I love milk too. So uh, it's very easy just to put like water, coffee and milk, like uh, in very equal proportions. And sweeter flavor and much less intense because of the milk. But it is still powerful at the level of caffeine presence. Then we have cappuccino. Similar to the previous one, uh, except that in this case, we will only find about a third of coffee and the rest being milk. In general, much of this uh, is found, the milk. And you can add some cocoa powder uh, at the end uh, to get like a sweeter flavor. And we have frappe one of the few variants that can be conceptualized directly as cold coffee. Uh, the frappe is made with ground instant coffee, iced and milk or cream. And I'm gonna share with you like a very, very easy recipe on how you can prepare a frappe in your house. For example, and you can share this with your parents, with your kids, with your boyfriend, with your girlfriend, with your friends, uh, with everybody. You only need uh, one cup of cold milk to uh, four tablespoons of coffee syrup. You can prepare this with water, coffee, and a little sugar. Two teaspoons of syrup or could be also chocolate sauce. Half tablespoon vanilla extract, ground cinnamon for sparkling, and this is optional. You can use, I don't know, uh, another kind of topping in the top of the of the frappe and two cups of, of ice and how to do very very easy you only have to uh, to mix all ingredients in a blender except the cinnamon until you get a frappe consistency and then you have to serve the preparation in a glass and decorate with whipped cream and ground cinnamon powder and at the end can can you obtain this like very delicious frappe? And this is very easy, like I said. And well, I talk about coffee because adulting is hard. Okay. Very that's good. All. Thank you. <laughs> very good. Very nice, uh, Ileana. So, uh, anybody has any question for Giselle? No questions. Well, I'm thirsty already, and definitely I'm gonna I'm gonna try the frappe. I I'm, I love that kind of thing. So definitely I need to try that one. Good, perfect. Thank you, thank you. So now, Francisco, are you ready? Yes, teacher. Okay. Teacher, uh, in my presentation is in a PDF file, but uh, I don't see the option that the. Uh, uh, yeah, you just need to have that open, and then at the bottom there should be an option that says share screen. If you don't see that one, there should be an option with three dots that it says more, and then you will be able to to see the other options there. Share screen. If you are doing that on a cell phone. Okay, teacher. And but uh, I, 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 it's possible that uh, I send uh, the file in the WhatsApp, WhatsApp group, teacher. Definitely send it, and I will open here. Or 
in Zoom chat. I try. Of course. Let me know whenever you send it so I can look for it. Okay, teacher, I send the, the file. Okay, I still have not received it. Just waiting for it. It's taking the bus so it can come. I still have not received it. Uh, does it show, uh, or just send it here maybe? Oh, here's it, okay. Let me just do it here. Yeah, it's fine. And let me then just open. Mm -mm. Uh, it gives me an error. Let me see if it's because of something else. Okay, I got it. I was able to open it. So I will just uh, be moving that one and uh, just let me know whenever I have to move it, okay? Okay, did you? Now here's it. Okay, here we go. This is Francisco's presentation. Ah, oh, this is a good topic. How to be a minimalist person. I am not able to do that one. Anyways, let's listen. <laughs> okay, teacher. Okay. Well, um, good night, buddy. Uh, in this time, uh, I, I present you uh, this training, how to be a minimalist person. Um, the first, uh, the agenda for this, this training is the first point, what is minimalism? And the next, how to apply this in your life. And for the last five tips to be a minimalist person. Okay. Uh, for the beginning, what is it? minimalism? Okay, the term minimalist refers to the tendency to reduce everything to the essential to eliminate excess element. A minimalist comes between having or not having material things. It is a lifestyle that invades you to live with what is truly necessary, which leads to a more orderly and simple routine. Well, a uh, how to apply you in your life, okay? To get started in this philosophy of a simple life, you have to be aware of the need for change by eliminating unnecessary things from day to day. Excess are suppressed and once begin to live calmly. Minimalism requires self-knowledge and an um, exercise in emotional detachment. But once it's a start, it will end, end up becoming a habit that will accompany an orderly and a simple life. Simple life. So, okay. And the first, the first tips is house inventory. Uh, in this tip is that you need to start 
with the, uh, for example, the most the most basic, start with the closet. Uh, how to apply uh, this uh, is divide the clothes, the ones that are used the most, then those that are forgotten in the background and those that are not used, consider giving them away or selling them. Then uh, continue with the, the, the kitchen, the living room, the bathroom, and every part of your house. This is that the first step or the second the second tips is give everything a place. Everything has its a place. It will be much easier to get everything in order, but visually and practical. For example, instead of dropping the keys on top of the dresser in the hall or inside the back when entering when entering the house. Place a pocket empty in the entrance. In this way, the keys will always be deposited there, which will make it easier to find them uh, when a day-to-day -day basis. <laughs> For example, uh, in the morning when you are late, this is this is a very uh, uh, very effective because uh, you. Uh, note that you put the keys in 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 the same the same place every day. <laughs> and the next the next tips uh, is learn to say no. Uh, the um, uh, to be a person minimalist is not only in the in the in the mat mat material area. Uh, it is referred to the the old the whole area in your life. Uh, in this tip, learn to say no a lot with the material parts. Minimalist also in place educating the brain in a new way of acting and freeing is from unnecessary worries. We often feel the pressure of having to ask committed that are not enriching, which takes time and energy. It is important to learn to value each other time. And the four tips is virtual cleaning. Probably the most helpful is still to start behind a minimalist. Once the specialist cleaning files, imagined and even music that is no longer here on the computer, also in the cloud, the latest mobile application that only take use spice and cleaning the email inbox are tasks that Every very difficult to get on with. However, it is a key a step to start from scratch with a much more orderly in a minimalist life. For example, you erase the old memo that you receive in the, the WhatsApp group. <laughs> and the, the last tip, left technology, it says a minimal life. It is also important to reduce the use of technology. That is equivalent to thinking about what times of the day we could do without it, because we spend a good part of the time hooked on my mobile phone and other device. Emotional detachment also had to occur in this area. For example, is it's normally that uh, we spend very time uh, watching, for example, uh, social media, and it's probably that that the uh, the social media is not necessary in your life. It's, it's possible. And right, uh, this is my presentation for this day. Thanks for your attention. Right. Okay, very good. Perfect. Thank you. It's a very good topic, Francisco. And uh, uh, anybody has any question or comment for this topic? Okay, this is a very important thing because we always carry many things. But in the future, we need to do because the space is going less and less and less. We are 8,000 million persons now. We are a lot of people. 
but uh, uh, I think it's difficult because uh, we have the 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 habits of keeping things. Uh, is the the first part I think is train the brain. The brain is uh, the the main point or the, the main objective, and I think I need to do I need to do it. Okay, very good. So yes, actually, you know, I I watch a documentary about that one. Some people maybe it's a little bit extremist. I mean, they they sold their houses and they live in a tiny thing with a little things. Um, I believe I cannot live like that. But yeah, sometimes it's a very good idea to to stop accumulating things, right? Things that maybe you will never use. Things that are not necessary, right? Problem is that we live in a world that is a consumism. I mean, me, myself, I, I buy a lot of shirts and I, I never wear those shirts. So that is a, a problem. I know that is a problem, but it's difficult sometimes. Some other things are not difficult. For me, for example, I never drink soda. So I, I know it's not healthy. Uh, yeah, maybe to adapt parts of that one to your life, it might be a very good idea. It was very interesting, and people that, uh, at, at least in that documentary that I saw, they were very happy, they say. I mean, living only with the most basic things. So it's a good try. Uh, we can give it a try. Very good. Perfect. Thank you, Francisco. Good, good. Anybody else is missing? Somebody? Now we, I think we're done. So very good. Yeah, I was telling you before that it's very, very nice, right? How can we learn not only English, but many things from each other? So there are many tips, many things, hacks for life, you know, that we can learn. And it's amazing. It's amazing to, to learn things with you because we are learning here. We all are learning. Very nice. So we have a few minutes and I brought a topic, but uh, we don't have much time, but let's see how it goes, okay? Let's talk about life regrets. So what are life regrets? Things that you wish you could do and you never did, or the other way around. Things that you did, but you think that you should have never done. So uh, life goes on, my friends. It finishes sometimes. Everybody's going to die someday. So sometimes we need to stop and think, right? Stop and think about where we are and where we're going to go. Uh, I was reading, for example, that Galileo Galilei, he, when any, anybody asked, how old are you? He used to say, I'm four years old, five years old. And everybody was like, you're not five years old and he said no this is like the the years that I, I still will live i believe that i will live five more years or seven more years so that is my age that is what i have in front it's not important what i did i mean it's important but it's more important what i will do so do you have any regrets in life yeah i think it's a, a very difficult topic because because we are young, but we don't think about that. We don't think. We only think, in, uh, I want to do that, I want to do that. And and no matter, only live once. <laughs> and you only live once and do it and do it. But then, uh, with the pass of the time, uh, we uh, start thinking about what we did in the past. But uh, uh, I think that uh, we need to learn to be happy with uh, what we have, what we have achieved, because uh, if we start uh, thinking about something that uh, was wrong in the past, I, I, I didn't do, but uh, okay, I, I can reflect, I can uh, learn, I can uh, maybe uh, teach to others, but I, I don't need to stay in that uh, to, to in, in that stage of my life because I uh, will uh, 
lost my present thinking in the past. And, uh, but it is important. It is important to see in the past, but uh, we need to learn to be happy, to be, live happy with uh, what we have. This is what we have. This is what we have done. And uh, that's all, because in the in the other way, we start to be frustrated, start to be hungry, start to be uh, 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 unhappy with the, what we have been doing at, at, until this day. And, and then it will be difficult to continue living. And, uh, as you say, what have I? What we have in front of me, I, I think that is important. What we have in front of me, okay, I, I, I stay, I start with, I stay now. I stay here, and from this part, I, I go on, and I, I will start doing something. I need to learn the past, I need to learn the lessons, but I don't uh, uh, be uh, frustrated because... I will lose my present. I will lose my life. It, it is a difficult. It is a difficult thing to teach. <laughs> yeah, you are so right. I mean, it's difficult, and and also you are right. Sometimes we don't stop and think about it, right? So we just continue and and that's it. Um, but and, and also you are right. I mean, we don't have to. Uh, I mean, what is done is done. You cannot change it. Uh, of course, you need to learn. You need to be a better person every day and think what is in front, right? I think that there are many things that maybe we want to achieve. So stop, start working on that one, right? Teacher, I absolutely agree. The, the sentence, I would have, it doesn't exist. It never will exist. So it doesn't worth it for you to spend your time thinking, I would have gone here, I would have done that. I don't like to regret unless it's a bad thing, right? Okay. But I usually, I, I think you must face um, the consequences of your decisions. It doesn't matter uh, if you took a decision, it was wrong, it was right. You have to face it. But if you regret, maybe you get frustration. So I, I don't agree with regrets. It's something that never happened and never will happen. So let's move on. That is a very good philosophy of life, definitely. So move on, right? So don't think about bad things in the past. Just plan for the future and, and move on with life, with the river runs. Good. Any other comment about this one? To take a good coffee, deep breath, and go ahead. <laughs> that is it, my friends. So, yeah, you know, uh, I totally agree on you. I mean, uh, yeah, we made mistakes. Everybody has done a lot of things. Um, and that happened, right? Uh, I believe that more than a regret is very important to stop and think of what, what I want to do in the future, right? We don't know, life is so fragile. I mean, you are here sitting down right now and tomorrow you're gone. And uh, yeah, it's, it's probably the most important about that one, uh, the reflection is to, to think what you want to do. I mean, this is something that it came to my mind uh, for this class because you know that I sometimes I want to speak about philosophy and things like that. Because the the I mean the year is almost ending. You almost finish your English classes, right? So three more modules, and that's it. So sometimes these closing cycles are uh, a good way for us to stop and think what will be the next step, right? Things that makes you happy. I mean, that is, is very, very important to, to stop and think, to be with the ones that you love, to, I don't know, to scream and dance and sing and 
do whatever you want. I mean, that is very important. So you are coming to a, a closing. I, I'm uh, actually, I'm very proud of you. I mean, because you are here in advance three, it's not easy. It's not easy to, to be here. It's not easy. I know that a lot of people, they start English classes, they start new projects and they never finish. And I know that you are going to finish because I mean, to be here is because you really, really care about this one and you work a lot. I know that having a job and come to classes is difficult, but this is going to end as well. So of course you need to continue practicing English, but other things are coming, right? So the reflection is that one. Never stop, never stop dreaming, but not only dream, I mean, plan and do the things that you really want to do. That is very important. And as David said, be happy. I mean, sometimes it's difficult to be happy, right? But that is why we are here, right? To, to enjoy with family, to see the stars at night, to walk ways that we never thought that we were going to be. We don't know what is going to come in the future. I mean, we had the pandemic and a lot of people died. So let's think about what we're going to do next. Let's stop and see our family, see what we have and move on and continue being happy. So let's do that one, my friends. Let's do that one. Yes, it, it is important to learn from the past, to think ahead. We need to think in the future. Uh, it, it no matter what age we are, we need to think in the future to see when, uh, where we are in the future. And uh, I just say something important. Everything we do have consequences. Everything. Whatever you do, if you wake up in the morning and get up, have consequences. You wake up and don't wear up, have consequences. Everything you do have consequences and, and, and it is important and there is a a, a, a universal law that, that what you saw is what you harvest. It, it is important. It, 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 it has to be with the toes, it has to be with actions, it has to be with everything. If, if you think in a good way, you harvest a good ways. But if you sing in a bad way, it is important. If you do, if you uh, like to criticize something, it's something that you harvest. And as you say before, try to be a better person every day because uh, we always do mistakes. We always make mistakes and we need to learn, we need to, to uh, thinking. Uh, what was the past and thinking what is the future that we want. Uh, learn to learn from the past, think in the future and know that everything has consequences. Everything you do, whatever you see, the minimum thing you do has consequences. And it's important. There is the butterfly effect. For the minimum that the, the thing you do has a, a profound effect in your future. So true, definitely. And uh, yes, yeah, sometimes we lost our track, right? Sometimes we work too much or we are always stressed out or things like that one. So let's stop for a while. Sometimes it's good to stop, to breathe, to enjoy life because it's just one journey and sometimes it's gonna, it's gonna end. I hope very far away for everybody. Okay, my friends, this was the class of tonight. I was very happy to be with you. Um, I don't know if we are going to be together the next year. If not, if you need to ask me something, you have my number already. You can chat with me on the WhatsApp. Um, if we see each other on the road there in Metro Center or something like that, I will speak to you in English, never in Spanish. So practice that one, my friends. And uh, I will check the attendance and then we say good night. So let's see what is it. Here is it. Okay, so Ana Claudia Gonzalez Velasquez. Present teacher. Good.
Andrés Giovanni Valdivieso Portillo. Present. Good. David Samuel Galdames Monterrosa. Present teacher. Good. Dora Elizabeth Flores Méndez. Present. Good. Fernando Ernesto Cosme Morales. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Present. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Present teacher. Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Iriana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Jarvin Isaac Guevara Miranda. Present teacher. Good. Jose Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Bran Mejía. Here, teacher, present. Good. Thank you for all. Ah, it's a pleasure. It was a pleasure to be with you. Ramon Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Omaña Orellana. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejía. William Alexander Ramirez Flores. Present. Good. Jessica Genari Cortez Diaz. Suleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernández. And Erwin Lagos Andrade. Present teacher. Good. So, my friends, it was a pleasure. I hope to see you very soon. And, well, have a Merry Christmas and a wonderful next year. Thank you. Thank you very much, teacher. Thank, Thank you very much, teacher. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you, teacher. Thank you, teacher. Thank you, teacher. Thank you for all, guys. Thank you for all, teacher. Thank you, Thank you for all, teacher. It was Thank a pleasure, my friends. Hello, Ramon. Do you have questions? Uh, well, I was remembering that you still haven't finished the platform, right? Good night, teacher. Uh, I just... Um, tonight, we will finish the platform, okay? Okay, perfect. Yeah, because it's very important for you to finish that tonight. Okay. Good night, teacher. Good night. Have Thank a wonderful... you for the class. It was a pleasure. Teacher, eh, uh, I voy a um, uh, llenarlo de la encuesta porque no lo no, no pude hacerlo este porque hasta ahorita voy llegando a la casa. Ok, ok. Eh, si quiere la termina, no sé si quiere que le ayude o tiene alguna pregunta. Eh, bueno, por el momento voy a revisar ahorita que lo. Eh, okay. Sí, por el momento voy a revisar ahorita lo que lo que tengo. Ok. Eh, si tengo dudas, pues ahí le solicito. Eh, me ayude. Ok, perfecto. Y me envía tal vez una captura después cuando termine ahí el, al grupo. Good. Sí, va a disculpar que se me descargó el teléfono y ahorita voy entrando. No, yo le entiendo, no tenga pena.
Ya la envié, teacher. Creo que ahorita lo acabo de enviar. Okay, yes, I received it already, so very nice. Okay, thanks, teacher. It was a pleasure. Have a good night then. It was a pleasure too. Have a good night. Bye-bye.